Hello. <laughs> it's kind of hard to follow Senator Scott, you know. I, it sounded like a revival backstage, <laughs> right? But that's great. That's the kind of energy that we need. I love that. I love that. So uh, my name is Congresswoman Kat Kamak. I represent Florida's third congressional district, the Gator Nation. Um, I know that we have some snowbirds that have have some ties to Florida, so that works. But I, yes, I am I'm referred to as the adopted congresswoman for New Hampshire um, for no other reason than I do the translation, right? <laughs> so it's pretty interesting being here at the First of the Nation Summit. Uh, you know, we have tremendous talent in the presidential field. We've got two amazing patriots from Florida, right? President Trump, Governor DeSantis, right? <laughs> You've heard from two great Southerners, Governor Nikki Haley and Senator Tim Scott, right? We have, we, have a, we have a really good field. But it's funny because then I come up here and I'm like, how y'all doing? And they're like, y'all. <laughs> y'all. And I'm like, you guys have a bunch of Southerners for presidential candidates, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do a quick translation. Um, so as y'all have figured out, y'all, that's you guys. Right? Yeah. I, I got in at about 1.30 this morning, and I was like, uh, uh, we can just, you know, we'll like pull in right there, and yeah, over yonder. And the guy's like, you mean pot the car? <laughs> I was like, yeah, that. <laughs> this morning, I was uh, messing with the TV, just catching up on some news, and um, you, you know how it feels. I mean, you wouldn't be here if you weren't frustrated and mad and angry like me, right? And so it's hard not to throw the remote at the television, right? But somebody's like, no, don't throw the clicker. <laughs> right? So while we may say things a little bit differently, you know, like pock the car and the clicker and all that, one thing is unique to us as Americans, not as Northerners and Southerners, but our love of country and what we are willing to do to get our country back on track, right? I, uh, I flew up last, well, I guess this morning, I landed about 1.30 uh, from DC, the fake swamp. I represent the real swamp, the Gator Nation, you know? <laughs> DC has been, you know, stealing all the ideas and all the names and everything for years. That's the fake swamp. But I flew up from DC. You guys may have heard we're having some issues. Yes. It's like a reality show. It really is. It's like, Next thing you know, you're going to turn on the, the television with a clicker, and uh, you're going to see it's like the Real Housewives of Washington, D.C., only the congressional edition, right? <laughs> so, yeah, we're having a bit of some speaker drama. We right now don't have a speaker, but we do have a bright spot. We have a speaker designee, yeah. Representative Jim Jordan. Yay! Yeah. And that's encouraging because I've been sitting in a room kind of like this for about two weeks with my colleagues and there's been a lot of talking about feelings. Lots of feelings. And I finally at one point said, y'all, again, y'all. I was like, y'all, if you don't get your act together, if you don't stop this, he hurt my feelings, this person looked at me funny one time, if you don't put your differences aside and put the needs and the will of the people that we represent first, not only will we lose this majority, we will lose this country. Because, yes, yes. You know, and leave it to a woman who's five foot three with T-Rex arms to be the adult in the room. Right? <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. For all my short girls, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> See, it's a thing. It's a vibe. But no, so we're in this room, locked in this room together, no phones. They took away our phones, which that was a blessing, because right now we're living through this era. You know how I talk about this reality show that DC has become? The new business model in politics has turned into what I call angertainment. Angertainment. It is this notion 
that you rage against the machine. You stomp your feet. You tweet in all caps, but you actually don't fix anything. It's the perception of fighting. It is a show, and it's all to raise campaign cash. And I know that for a fact because I've been living it, where I tell my colleagues, you know that didn't really happen, or hey, you know, that's not really helpful. And they say, yeah, but I'm going to get this reshared so many times on the internet that I'm going to raise a ton of money. I've had colleagues tell me, Kat, I know, I know that that wasn't how it went down, but you know, I just raised $250,000. I've had them say to me, the money's too good. And so what we, as the people, have to do is reject the notion that angertainment is what we need. Be mad, yes. Be frustrated, absolutely. Tell people about it, oh, absolutely, sure. But if you are not willing to back up your words with action, it's theater. And I don't know about you, but I am damn sick and tired of the political theater where people run their mouth and then they do nothing about it to fix it, right? Yeah. And so I've thought really long and hard about what it would take to break this crazy cycle of the rage against machine, the entertainment model that everyone has evolved into, right? Because everybody wants a fighter in Washington. Everybody wants somebody who's gonna go up there and fight fearlessly for the cause of liberty and freedom, our republic, which if I hear another damn Democrat tell me we have a democracy, I will <laughs> do something that I might regret. <laughs> Woo. We, this is where we say, bless their hearts. You know, I once said that to Nancy Pelosi. <laughs> and she didn't know me at the time. She knows me now. Um, she didn't know me at the time, and I just said it with as sugary sweet as I possibly could. I said, oh, bless your heart. And she smiled at me. <laughs> and then about 10 seconds later, it, it registered. She was like, Oh, hell. <laughs> she told me to you know what. <laughs> That's what I love about, I, I love about being a Southerner. You can say things with a smile, you know, and it really means something else. <laughs> Up here, y'all just tell it like it is, and I do appreciate that. But no, I, I've been thinking long and hard about how do we fight back against this entertainment machine that we've evolved into. How do we get back on track? And I know it's difficult because we're in a heated primary across the country for the presidency. We're in this battle to take the Senate. We're in a fight to grow the majority in the House, which we're hanging on by a thread. And it dawned on me a couple of days ago that the only way that we are gonna make it through this is as a team. In the South, we say, we're gonna love you through this. Like, I'm gonna pray for you. Like, that's an insult in some, in some situations to say that. But that's what we have to do. I may not agree with some of my colleagues' decisions and things that they say, but they took the exact same oath that I did. And as a constitutional conservative, we have to get back to the basics as one team, one mission. Nothing else will get us back if we ignore that document. And I'll tell you, talking about unity, that is not sexy. It's not. When's the last time you heard someone who was all like, rah, rah, here's the team. No, because right now everybody wants to talk about how that person over there is a rhino and that person over there is crazy. Listen, I'm fluent in fringe. I can talk to the mods. And the thing that I have figured out working in all these different circles is that we all want the same thing. We just disagree on how we want to get there. Some people want to take the scenic route. That's fine. That's why I like New Hampshire so much. You guys have seasons. We have two seasons in Florida. Hot and gross. Our state bird is the mosquito. 
And if you, if you listen to the urban legends, we, the University of Florida, go Gators, uh, we created these little things called love bugs. It's two bugs that are stuck together, engaging in questionable activities. That's why they're called love bugs. And they stick to your car and they're everywhere. They come out twice a year. It's terrifying. People get very, very confused and very scared. But that's the thing though. If we don't come together, all is lost right? We have got to understand that you can take the scenic route, you can take the expressway, we're all heading to the exact same spot. We have got to figure out how to get everybody on the bus. And I think it starts in this room. This is first in the nation. Iowa picks corn, you guys pick presidents, right? My Iowa friends are going to be like, oh, Cat Camac. <laughs> yeah, right now they're saying, bless your heart. <laughs> That's all right. They're going to be madder than a tapeworm in a tomato patch right now. <laughs> yeah, that's another Florida special right there. Um, but no, think about it. It's not necessarily the candidates. It's us in the room. If we are continually out there pointing fingers saying, you're a rhino, or you're crazy, or you're doing this, or you're doing that, we're just continuing to further divide. And if we do not come together and love each other through some of these difficult moments, we will never get this back. People talk about the Roman Empire, right? I'm a, I'm a history nerd. We are not headed towards, we're not in the empire. We're at the republic stage. See, Rome was a republic before it became an empire. There was this fight between Caesar and Pompey. That's where we are. You can literally go back in the history books and read about the various senators, and you can match them up to who we have in Congress today. It's terrifying. I almost feel like a bit of a fortune teller, like, ooh, that doesn't end. You know what stinks about Joe Biden? He ruined whispering. Now it just comes across as creepy. It's terrible. Like, damn it, this morning I saw somebody who I've, I've known for a couple years now. I was like, hey, I gave her a hug. She had like really pretty perfume on, and I was like, and I was like, oh, I'm so sorry, just Joe Biden you. <laughs> the Democrats ruin everything. They really do. It's terrible. No, I think when you take a step back, you realize that history, yes, it does repeat itself in so many ways. We need to learn from it. You read what happened, I think, why didn't they come together? They could have stopped that transition from republic to empire. They could have stopped it. But so many people sat on the sidelines. So many people said, nah. We cannot do that. We have to learn from history. Because the enemy is not in here. It is not amongst us. And I don't care if you're a libertarian, a moderate, a social conservative, a fiscal conservative. I don't care. If you love this country, if you believe in the Constitution, think of it as a Reagan moment. If you're with me 80% of the time, you are a good and trusted friend. You are not a 20% traitor. And that is my message as we're going through the speaker's fight where 55 of my colleagues say, no, I don't want Jim Jordan. We're going to love him through it, and we're going to get Jim Jordan as speaker. We will. The enemy is not in this room. The enemy is the liberal progressive agenda. I see it up close and personal every single day in Washington. And people ask me, they say, Kat, what is it that they want? Is it open borders? Is it crime? What is it? I said, oh, they don't have one thing that they're after. The liberal progressive agenda, it's nothing but dependency and control. If you take a step back and you look at all of their legislative achievements and goals, it points to one thing, dependency and control. They want to grow the size of government 
so that we are dependent on government programs so that they, the swamp creatures in Washington, stay in control. That is all it has ever been about for them. That is what they are rooted in, and that is their vision. They could care less about a particular policy issue. All they want is what something, all they want is a policy that advances that agenda. Think about the nameless, faceless bureaucrats that dwell in basements all over Washington, right? We have three branches of government. I affectionately refer to the fourth branch, the regulatory regime. It's a bunch of these bureaucrats that have made careers out of dwelling in a basement with no private sector experience, creating laws, subverting Article I authority of Congress, and then using their power to force their will on you through rules, regulations. That is why we're so out of whack right now, because Congress has taken a step back saying, no, we don't want, we don't want to take and assert our authority we'll let the White House do it. And that has given license for this imperial presidency to run roughshod over the American people. But it wasn't just this presidency, it was Obama, it was Clinton. Heck, there was even some Republicans along the way, Bush. We have to stop thinking about this as a R versus D in my mind, Today, you are either a big government advocate or a small government advocate. And we're going to love all our small government advocates. Because if we don't rein in that regulatory regime, if we do not stop the Nancy Pelosi, Joe Biden, Chuck Schumer agenda, we will not have the free constitutional republic that gives us a nation that is rooted in equal opportunity, not equal outcome. You heard Senator Scott talk about how he came up, how he was destined for a life that was predetermined, but because of the opportunity in this country, and a badass mama, by the way, his mom is amazing. Because of that, he is living the American dream. He is the epitome of that. You look at all of our candidates for president. Look at President Trump. Look at what he has accomplished. You look at Ron DeSantis. You look at Nikki Haley. You look at all of our candidates. They are the epitome of American dream because they know what it takes to succeed. I'm standing in front of you today as someone who 11 years ago was homeless. Homeless, the daughter of a single mother, broken family, very blue collar working class family struggled with addiction. And because of the opportunity that we have in this country, because of people like you who have continued to fight for that opportunity, for our republic, I am now a member of the House of Representatives and only in this country can someone like me go from being homeless into the House of Representatives in the span of a decade. So is it worth protecting? Yes. Are you going to stand with our candidates and fight for our country? Yes. Do you promise me that we will be one team, one mission, and defeat the Democrats next year? Yeah. Come on, you got to do better than that. Come on. There we go. Okay. Thank you guys so much. It is an honor and a privilege to serve as your adopted congresswoman. I may not be able to receive your vote, but I vote for you every single day. Thank you so much.